Act two, all right. We have a title to go along with this. Suspects on Parade. Nice. Your perky demeanor and thorough technique are making you a first-class detective. Oh, nice. I've been judged. All right, let's do a new save here. Act two. And now it's the old Considering car. Considering that this car is parked right out in front of the museum, it probably belongs to an important staff member, so it's not a good idea to fool around with it. If you say so. Consider Looking at the mighty cumulonimbus cloud formations in the sky, you're reminded of your childhood when your father would sit beside you on the grass in front of your house, smelling the scents of summer and looking for familiar shapes among the clouds. That's a lovely memory that she just shared with us. I like that. kind of just want to take in a bit more of this. That's a nice looking fountain. A fountain. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sometimes she just goes on and on, very descriptive. You feel like you're there, very vivid, and then other times, it's a fountain, douchebag. A fountain. It's got water. It's definitely a tree. All right. All right, you're gonna be an ass. Let's just go in the museum. Colonel? This affair is by invitation only, Fraulein. Your papers, please. Man, Nazis. <laughs> Arrivederci. Let's uh, give them our universal press pass that gets us out of and into anything we want. Danke, Fraulein. I'll return this pass when you are leaving. Enjoy yourself this evening. Hmm. Do, 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 do. Wow. Come on, you gotta say something. It's a colossal bust of the Pharaoh Ramses II, discovered at the Ramesseum, his mortuary temple on the Nile's west bank opposite present-day Luxor. The complete Ramses statue stood nearly 60 feet tall and weighed more than 1,000 tons. Presumably Ramses was not this large in life, <laughs> although many people have stated that Ramses had a big head. Now is that Laura saying that or is that the narrator? Either way, very knowledgeable. Heard any good rumors lately? Maybe. Or maybe not. Ziggy. What's it worth to you? Uh, well, I don't have any money right now. I trade in water. Hey, got no rumors for you, Tuts. I can show you my press pass. Bonjour, Miss Bo. Dr. Carrington told me you were covering this party for the newspaper. Yvette. I'm Yvette Delacroix. Uh -huh. That's right, Miss Delacroix. I'm writing the social news column. Ah, the social news. I was thinking you were here about the burglary. Huh. The burglary? <laughs> of course not. The newspaper would never assign a female cub wink, reporter wink. like myself to such an important story. Wink, wink. Ah, uh, you are probably being correct, Miss Bo. <laughs> she bought it. All right. The obvious first thing to ask her about. What's with you and fat? Him. The little laundry I take to the cleaners, Lofat does it himself. We have the deal he enjoys, so it costs me nothing. Wanna expound on that deal a little bit? <laughs> Very forthcoming with that. I know where my mind is going. Rightfully so. What do you think of 1926? Has this been a good year for you, Miss Delacroix? Ah, oh, yes. Every year is a good year for me, Miss Bo. It is all a matter of the attitude, no? Why, that seems like a very healthy point of view. It does. Merci, Miss Bo. You are very kind. <sighs> Lots of folks here. Uh, I didn't mean to like, I just want to casually talk to some Good of these evening, fellas. Good evening, Dr. Carrington. Uh, Dr. Carrington. Good evening, Miss Bow. Good evening. 
everybody from the Good beginning. Evening, sir. My name is Laura Bow. I am Ramses Najia, Miss Bow. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Bit of a lisp. This is quite a party. Does the museum always have a big fundraiser when they open a new exhibit, Dr. Carter? No, but they've never had such an important exhibit opening here before. And I'm an important curator with an important salary, so the museum wouldn't have been able to keep me employed here without financial assistance. You're talking about that two dollars from be Fat. Very important for the museum to go to so much trouble. Goes a long way. Naturally. The museum is lucky that I accepted this position as the head of their new Egyptian antiquities department. Why, my name alone will attract more visitors and more money to the museum. Any chance that the Tut Uncommon exhibit will make a stop here on its American tour? No. I'd hate to embarrass my relative by putting his Tut Uncommon artifacts on display here. They pale by comparison to my own great discoveries, huh. such as the Dagger of Amun Ra. Which recently of course. went missing. How silly of me to think otherwise. Yes, that was rather silly of you. I don't know, I think like the average Joe would rather see uh, the tomb of Two Tank Two Tank Common. I'm sure I butchered that, but uh Sorry, let's ask him about Hold on. I'll get there. The dag we can't ask him about the dagger? Well, ask about the burglary. You must be very upset about the burglary. Quite so. If I ever find out who stole my dagger of Amun Ra, they won't live to regret it, I can assure you. Oh my. Do you have any idea who would do such a thing? I have my suspicions, but I need more proof before I subject him to the full force of my wrath. Really? Have the police learned anything? Those incompetents. Hardly. They couldn't even find any clues around the dagger display. Maybe they were just hungry. Sounds like the burglar might have been a professional. <laughs> Perhaps. It's more likely the local constable couldn't find a clue if it jumped up and bit him on the bum. Fair enough. Sweet spread. Speaking of food, we gave away our sandwich to that cop earlier. Can I the get something? The food and champagne look good, but you're trying to stay on a diet, so you make the wise decision to leave them alone. I thought you never drank. Is that just something you told uh, Ugarte? You'd like to reach out and touch the rams. You pick it up and place it in your purse. What'd we just take? A crystal water receptacle. Huh. Cool. Don't touch it. Unlike the water glass, where we have a full history of, we have the car facts, the glass facts. Do not save over Act 2, Tony. Hi! You're having such a good time, I thought I'd introduce myself. I'm Laura Bow of the New Orleans Bows. She's so nice. The fanatically happy snobs just ignore Aww. you entirely. They're having so much fun, you're sure they're putting on an act to impress their friends. <laughs> Hi! The fanat... <laughs> wow. So naive, she did it twice. Hi! The fanatic... Ha! You look like you'll actually talk to me. What do you think of 1926? Countess, has 1926 It's my been favorite thing to ask about. You? No, no, dear girl. It's been absolutely horrid. My darling husband Sterling died this year, you know. I don't know what I'll do without him. I'm terribly sorry to hear that, Countess. Well, aren't you the sweet little thing? Thank you, my dear. It's nice. You see a short, elderly woman dressed flamboyantly and you suspect expensively, and sporting a grotesque amount of makeup. <laughs> In fact, when she Ew. speaks, you notice Ugh. small flecks of base coat chipping off of her jowls and tumbling onto her furred collar. 
Alright, that's a bit much. But Laura's weight she's a lot meaner on her inner uh, monologue than when she actually talks to anybody. Please, my dear, let's keep our hands to ourselves, shall we? Decorum, my dear. Decorum is the order of the day. Sorry, the lady in the uh, speakeasy bathroom liked it. <laughs> Don't touch the fanatically happy part. The fanatically happy... Gift shop. Let's see what we can find here. Ooh, unattended gift shop. Yes, please. No wonder this museum has such a problem with theft. Get ourselves some Laura, cash. you'd never steal. You can't touch the daggers on display in the locked cave. Don't touch it. Don't touch it. Don't. Don't mess don't, with it. Don't touch. Don't touch it. This is the counter. Don't touch. Ugh. These like knockoff. It looks just like yeah. the dagger of Amon Ra. Isn't it beautiful? Watch the real one be in here, and they like switched it out somehow. This case holds beautiful museum replicas. Glass, got the magnifying glass. Can we actually like use this on stuff? So I'm just saying like check out these daggers. Made in Pittsburgh! The shows Pittsburgh's <laughs> high degree of craftsmanship. Did she laugh when she said that? That looks pretty cool it actually. It's just like you can't touch the daggers on display in the you can't you can't Can I do that on everything? Inspect. Upon that's not the sort of thing you want to ex The dagger shows the dag That's interesting though. We just He's all the same. Huh. It looks just you can't touch Why'd that one say pit Oh seven thirty. This is the first time I think we've seen a running clock just like in the original game. Oh, Fraulein, Must be Nazi o'clock. shop is closed. You should not be here. Oh, I'm sorry. The door was unlocked. Unlocked? My assistant will be disciplined harshly for this mistake. Please rejoin the party now. I will be forced to injure you. Nazi style. The gift shop is. Huh. I don't know. I feel like the real dagger's in there. That's just my hunch. Why else would he care, you know? Ha! I'm Hi. Laura Bow. She's so happy. Being snobbish, high society types, these party goers just ignore you entirely. You're simply not a part of their social circle. And you thought wearing a two-year-old dress wasn't going to be a problem. You thought no one would notice, Laura. Look at you now. Wow, is this guy going for the record? He's pounding that drink. Ha! Being snob. Ha! The semi-happy. Semi-happy. Fanatics are on the other side. This guy's doing the same thing. Hey, this guy's Fez. You must be Dr. Patar Shepta. Remember this guy? Nice gold onk you're wearing. This is quite a party, isn't it? I find it distasteful to celebrate thievery in the name of science. The artifacts in this museum's Egyptian collection do not belong here. Huh. They belong in Egypt. They belong in a museum. That's only your opinion. <laughs> it is the truth. And the thieves who rob Egypt of its ancient treasures will find death waiting for them. Amon Ra will have his revenge. Oh. I see. Well, hmm. Nice weather we're having. Oh, he's just being honest with you, Laura. He's like the first. What's he wearing? Upon close inspection, that's n upon upon. Don't look at me like that, Lassie. You're making me nervous. That hair looks normal. Have you heard anything about the burglary? No. 
Do you have any idea who would want to steal the dagger of Amon Ra? It has already been stolen once from Egypt. I can see I won't get anywhere with you on this topic. Two wrongs. I can use the glass to eavesdrop on folks. You hear nothing of in- No, thank you. I'm not thirsty. Interesting. I'm not thirsty, lass. You hear nothing. Can I eavesdrop on P? How do I do that? Good evening, Dr. Maklos. Oh, good evening, Miss Ball. Dead bed is How open. are you, Detective O'Reilly? Just fine, Lassie. You're looking lovely this evening. Ah, uh, yeah, Detective O'Reilly. Nice to see him out of the office. This might embarrass him in front of these people, if but... If you ask me, Missy, they're blowing the whole thing out of proportion. Bigora. You'd think that something important had been stolen. You don't consider a priceless Egyptian artifact to be important? Not when the Pittsburghians Listen, can make... If I chased down every petty theft that occurred within the nastier segments of the population, I'd be working 30 hours a day. I would hardly call the Lion Decker Museum a nasty segment of the population, Mr. O'Reilly. And if you're referring to our Egyptian visitors, shame on you. And don't call me girly. Tell him, Laura. Any father's whiskers, you're a fiery one, Miss Laura. All right, I won't call you girly, little lassie. Ugh. So we can eavesdrop just by standing behind some folks. Ah. There I was, standing on the hillside above the excavation in the Valley of the Kings, with the faithful Mahmud describing the dance of the Seven Veils to me in great detail, when a shout arose up from the workers below us. Sensing an important discovery at hand, since I have a sixth sense about these things, I scurried downhill to see that a step had been uncovered in the sand. It turned out to be the entrance to the Temple of Amon-Ra. I took the trowel from the Boscafir <laughs> and cleared the sand away from the rest of the I steps just noticed, myself, Laura. revealing the entrance to the temple. The seal of the necropolis was intact on the door seal, indicating that the temple had not been disturbed. I knew that fate had brought me to the discovery I had been seeking for so long. Tireless after my exertion in clearing the staircase, I used a sledgehammer to break through the sealed doorway. Within lay the greatest accomplishment of my considerable career. Hidden within the darkness, untouched for thousands of years in the isolated temple, lay the magnificent dagger of Amun-Ra, the greatest discovery of modern archaeology. Good show! <laughs> Magnifique! Very impressive, Dr. Carter! So, Dad? that's when you heisted it, right? <laughs> no, I didn't heist it, you annoying little man. I took it out of the temple and showed it to the workers, who immediately fell upon their faces, all 350 of them, to show respect for my accomplishment. That's hard to believe, Dr. Carter. Egyptian workers have proudly worked the archaeological digs for many years. Uh, I would not think they'd exaggerate their respect for you to such an extent. But then about that you voice. weren't there, were you, Mr. Najia? Well, no, that's true. And when was the last time you were in Egypt, Mr. Najia? Giant button. You seem to have lost some of your accent. <laughs> well, yep. it has been several years. I thought as much. You sound like a, one of the really three stooges. Was quite a remarkable achievement, Dr. Carter. Was remarkable, Dr. Carrington. You mean, it is a remarkable achievement. There has never been anything like it before. Quite so. Correction noted, Doctor. If you will all be excusing me, I see a man I need to speak to. Certainly, Miss Delacroix. 
Certainly. Can we help you, Laura? It's like, oh, I'm sorry. I didn't know you could see me. This always works in New Orleans. Boy, did you bet. She's some dish, ain't she? <laughs> hey, she's with Mr. Fat. Yes, though French women really have something. I don't think my wife would ever have done it in a mummy case. In my vast experience of women from different lands, I tend to agree with you, Mr. Niger. I balked when a certain French woman suggested we have a deep conversation on the back of a dinosaur, <laughs> but I was pleasantly surprised by the results. <laughs> Locker room yes, talk. Miss Delacroix is certainly the cat's pajamas, as the Americans would Locker say. Locker room talk amongst the yeah, intellectuals in the twenties. We come up with some good sayings, don't we? And Quiet. Ugarte. Good Lord, I hadn't realized a woman was present. Please excuse us, Miss Bo. <laughs> oh, I wasn't actually listening uh, to you, oh, gentlemen, Doctor uh, Carrington. I just happened to be standing here. Excuse me. Looks like she has rollers in her hair. Alright, who else can we eavesdrop on? Gotta try that move all over the museum now. Is the gift shop unoccupied? Yes. There we go. I want a second look at these daggers. Now that the Nazi's gone. All right, Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh. I guess it's like different knives each time. One of them did not say Pittsburgh, though, like at the top. Am I meant to think that that's... Is that the real one? <laughs> or they just forgot to write Made in Pittsburgh on that particular dagger. Let's just be the one at the top. Unless I'm imagining things. That's not the sort upon cl What? I'm losing my mind. I could have sworn. Maybe the Nazi took it. There's clearly a space here. This case holds it looks just like Hmm. She's not saying anything. I feel like you know what? Can't save in here. Wait, didn't I just save in here? <laughs> I am losing my mind. This game's gaslighting me. Alright, so let's... Let's save here. And this is just for my own... Curiosity here. Thank <laughs> Now back in the 20s, man. Everything was American made. This is the greatest tool at a journalist's disposal. Your save files. Man, there is totally an extra. I can put my finger right, right here on the screen. We're gonna... These Lauras are all over the place. I guess this is the one. Yep. There's a dagger missing. At the very top. Alright. I was just joking around, but clearly... Or he just decided to buy a dagger after hours. Get that five-finger discount for a novelty dagger. Are there any more real people to spy on? Not these snooty, snotty folks who won't talk to us. I just want to see that animation again. Ryan, <laughs> I'm having the hardest of times keeping my hands off you. Whoa! Not here, Yvette. There's too many people. What about Mr. Fat? They are not important. You are the most powerful man here, my Ryan. I mean, look at the way he fills out that what tux. What about that Carrington guy? He's president of this museum. The doctor, he is old and weak. You are the young one and strong. And what would you be wanting, Miss Bow? <laughs> oh. oh, well, I thought 
I heard you call my name. You must have been Heron Things. I didn't even mention your name. Oh, sorry. Uh, I've got to be going now. Excuse me. Leave my hand in this universal eavesdropping position. These people... Okay. I like that they just... And what were you doing they... when that fancy dagger was being stolen then? Let me see. Hmm. I was sleeping in my hotel room. You don't sound too sure about that. I haven't been sleeping too well since I arrived in this country. I'm tired, so I'm not thinking too well. You're not sleeping well. Would you be having a guilty conscience like, then? No, but just America sucks. I, I got mugged twice. I don't understand your meaning, Mr. O'Reilly. Perhaps it is the English. It is such a curious language, not as clear as the Egyptian. Well, you say the dagger is what brought you to this country. If I were in your position, I'd be tempted to steal it. Steal what has already been stolen? That line again. The dagger of Amon Ra belongs to the Egyptian people, Mr. O'Reilly. Not to Dr. Carter, not to this museum, and not to this country. I'd be watching what you're saying, Dr. Smith. You're digging your hole deeper with every word. Amon Ra will seek his own vengeance on those who have removed his dagger from Egypt. Amon Ra does not require my help. You say you were sleeping when it was stolen. Were you alone? That, sir, is none of your business. Ah, oh, that's where you're wrong, Dr. Smith. It is my business, as long as you're a suspect in the burglary. A suspect? Do you Americans have no shame? I'm here to gain the return of the dagger by legal means. Ask Dr. Carrington. I have talked to Dr. Carrington. And I know he told you no dice. Give him one of them Pittsburgh knives. Get him out of until here. The last camel drinks from the water of the oasis. What's that? Some kind of Egyptian double talk? <laughs> Excuse me, sir, but I see a turkey leg on the buffet <laughs> table that requires my attention. Asteroids game from the uh, game rooms calling my name. You see a rotund, ruddy-complexioned man in affairs. Despite his bulk, he moves with dignity and grace. I like that. Yeah, the groups just keep cycling out. We don't even have to relocate to eavesdrop. Upon closing, that's n upon cl If you look closely at my neck, you will see the scars from the night my pet Wolverine tried to kill me. How I miss little Fluffy. What? Stop that, you silly female. No. Hmm? Once you guys have a private conversation, I can listen in on. No? Okay. I'm not in the mood. As you st Whatever. Let's see who's resituated over here. It is a nice spread. If you want to know my theory about it, I think it was stolen by an Egyptian. No offense to your people, Mr. Najir. But I think there is a secret sect of Egyptian sun worshippers who have sent an envoy here to steal the dagger. Countess, I hardly think that likely. Secret sects like you're describing haven't existed in hundreds of years. Oh, really? And what makes you such an authority on secret sects, Mr. Najir? <laughs> well, I am only expressing my opinion, madam. I'm certainly not an expert on a subject. Quite so. I think my theory is as good as anyone's, darling. And I heard it from a reliable source. Oh? Who was that? Never mind. Let's just say my source has never been wrong before. Hmm. There's always a first time for everything, Countess. I still find your theory far-fetched. Since you seem to be listening, Miss Bow, what do you think of my theory? <laughs> what? Oh, I definitely think it's worth considering, Countess. Laura! There, you see, Mr. Najir, the press takes me seriously. Make fun of people with speech impediments. Mm. Of course, it is kind of far-fetched. Huh. Well, I never! Excuse me. You can take your hand down from... Oh, did I say something wrong? I'm sorry. 
She could be savage too. That's why we love Laura. I don't know. I'll take Dark Side Josh Mandel slash King Graham's witness relocation voice over uh, Najir. I just uh, I can't deal with that. So that's the deal, Countess. There we go. I'd rather not talk about it right now. Yeah, no kidding. The wall's got ears around here. And so does certain nosy reporters, <laughs> if you know what I mean. You guys starting to catch on that I'm yes, eavesdropping on everyone? Excuse me, I simply must speak to Dr. Carrington. Sure thing, toots. We're not done here. We are not done here, Laura. Oh, are we done here? These guys look like they could be eavesdropped on... No? No. Upon cli- Please do not scrutinize me so severely, Miss Bone. I'm not- Good evening. Good evening, Miss Bow. Hmm. Odd. Anybody over here? It's a fresh pair. Oh, well, ain't you the hoity-toity dame these days? <laughs> I almost didn't recognize you with your clothes on. Damn, Ziggy! Excusez-moi, am I knowing you, sir? Ziggy's my moniker. You gonna pretend you doesn't know me? Ah, <laughs> uh, you are making the joke with me, no? Perhaps you have confused me with someone else? I ain't joking! You're a bad telecrow! <laughs> I, I, I know that body of yours anywhere! I am sure I am not knowing what you mean, Monsieur Ziggy. Oh, I get it. You is worried one of these hi hats is gonna hear us, right? Oh, okay. I'm clued in. We can talk later. Do you think it's funny to just be running in one direction and stop for no reason whatsoever? Are you enjoying the culinary delights this evening, Miss Delacroix? This food, it is adequate. I do not eat so much. This way I maintain my figure, no? Ah, yes. Uh, and a lovely figure it is, Miss Delacroix. Merci, Dr. Carrington. You are so kind. I feel we've known each other long enough. Please call me Archibald. Mm -hmm. As you wish, Archibald. I am yours to command, as always. Damn. Miss Bo, is there something I can do for you? Man. Oh, no. I was just admiring Miss Delacroix's dress. Aren't we all? Merci, Miss Bo. And your gown, it is a bit out of date, but charming nonetheless. Uh, Thank you. I uh, found uh, a laundry ticket in the garbage. Well, if you ladies will excuse me, I must mingle with the guests. Man, Laura really needs a couple walls and like peepholes to get her eavesdropping in order. This this half-assed in broad daylight eavesdropping just doesn't quite cut it. Well, well, look what the leprechaun's dragged in. Hey, now watch what you calls me, alrighty. I don't know what that leprechaun thing <laughs> is, but I don't like the sound of it. <laughs> I'm sure you've been called worse things, smart guy. <laughs> Only by low-class type poisons, O'Reilly. By the way, ain't you afraid of being seen with me? Chief Thief of Mordavia! I talk to stoolies all the time, and I was wondering what you're doing here. I'm a big patron of the arts. That's the kind of high-class guy I am! You don't even know what the word patron means. <laughs> I does too! Why don't you look at the guy okay, when you're talking? what does patron mean? Um... Hey, ain't that the Countess I see over there? I need to talk to her. Needs. I bet you needs to. Think it's funny to have six legs and no socks to match? You idiot. I am sorry. Can't not think of Chief Thief. It's like a trust falls activity or something. I don't know what these guys are doing. They're going in for like a hug and then... I don't know. Ah, uh, that's a new group though. Definitely eavesdrop on them.
A lot of eavesdropping, by the way. This is going... I'm assuming I'm not meant to, like, go off into some other room. I guess I'll do it till there's not any more, uh, conversations to eavesdrop. One thing I am admiring about the Egyptian man is the way he is treating his woman with the strong hand and the firm words. Well, that is the proper way, as our culture teacheth us. Which is not to say our culture is primitive by any means. Our civilization has evolved over thousands of years, so our methods are quite well thought out and practical. Mmm, and the Egyptian man, he is very skilled in the private matters as well, no? Well, speaking for myself, I feel it is my sacred duty to be knowledgeable in all matters that concern me. I've certainly had no complaints about my skills, Mrs. Delacroix. Ah, Miss Bo, I didn't see you standing there. How could you miss me? I've been doing this uh, all <clears throat> night. Well, I hear another turkey. Another there, turkey. My name at the buffet table. So if you'll excuse oh, me. Oh, yeah. Looks like he's wearing the that scarab leg. as a... It sounds good to me also. I'll accompany you, Dr. Smith. She is not subtle, is she? That Yvette. I mean, we were right at the table, by the way. The food and... You're not going to eat this entire game, are you, Laura? We need to talk about this. Just the ladies. Countess, they tell me you were married to the last museum president, no? Yes, darling, that's correct. Passed away. Sterling Waldorf Carlton was such a charming man and so wealthy. My heart is just an empty void without him. Yes, Sterling was such a nice man. It's too bad that he's worm food now. It's, it's kind. I prefer to think that Sterling is still with me in spirit. Yes. Oh, I'm sure his body is crawling with maggots by now. What? But if his spirit is with you, let me know because I'd love to see it. Wow. It is hard to lose a loved one, no? I understand you were only married this short time, Countess. Yes. I had only two short but charming months of married life with Sterling before he died. Hmm. And how long had you known this man before you were married? Oh, we met just one charming month before we decided to get married. It was love at first sight. Was it? Where did you meet him? I mean... Oh, I had only been in this country a few weeks when I met Sterling on an offshore casino ship. It's quite legal to drink and gamble there, you know. Not accusing. And all the right people attend. Sterling was so charming, he just swept me off my feet. This Sterling, he must have had the large broom. But, oh. It's just a manner of Savage. Speech, Sterling was a wealthy man. You must have inherited a nice fortune, Countess. The money doesn't matter, darling. Actually, there's an annoying problem with the estate right now. It seems Sterling was changing his will when he died to give me more money, right. perhaps. Finally, some juicy details. Anyway, I'm sure my attorney will take care of the problem. Too bad you can't dig him up to finish his new will. Yes, quite. A little insensitive, all that, uh... Interesting. Also interesting that... She, I don't know. Doesn't seem like the gold digging type, or at least, I don't know. I don't know about Sterling, the kind of ladies he was into. Everyone has a type, I suppose. Seems like more of an Yvette type. The archaeology, it is such a masculine profession. Breaking into the ancient tombs with your sledgehammer, thrusting your way into the treasure chambers, touching the gold artifacts. It is also... Stimulating, no? She would have had Sterling in a yes. day. Well, when you put it that way, I guess it is rather stimulating, being the most important archaeologist of all time. And it is such a burden to bear this greatness, no? With such pressure to perform, you must be perfect all the time. Yes, you have a unique understanding of my problems, Yvette. Are your problems, they are obvious, no? 
Very kind of you to say that, but there are many who misinterpret my actions. They don't understand the pressure of having famous relatives in the same line of work, and having to compare oneself to them all the time. Ah, but the Tutankhamun find, it is nothing when compared to your discovery, no? That's how you know she's Correct. full of it. I didn't realize you knew so much about archaeology. I know many things, Dr. Carter. So I've heard. Maybe we should discuss archaeology sometime. I'd love to hear about the work you do, Dr. Carter. So much innuendo. Perhaps later tonight? Will you be working late tonight? Oh, yes. I think everyone will be here tonight, no? There is much to be done to prepare for the opening of your exhibit tomorrow. I was planning a break for tea around 3 a.m. if you'd like to join me. And you could even look at me. It sounds wonderful. When we get together. Perhaps you would uh, come by my office then? Ooh, okay. I'd be delighted. 3 a.m. It is so gracious of you to take the time to speak with me. Nonsense. Think nothing of it. Count it. How will I ever repay you for this courtesy? I know how busy you are, Dr. Carter. Let's hook up already. Hmm. I'm sure we'll think of something. And call me Pippin. Maybe you could get me some free laundry. I told you to stop bothering me, you camel driver. Dr. Racist. I will stop bothering you when the dagger is safely back in Cairo. I don't know if you've noticed, but the bloody dagger has been stolen from the bloody museum, you great twit. I see no reason to exchange epithets with you, Dr. Carter. I am aware of the burglary. I am also aware that no evidence was left behind, and the dagger case was not harmed. In fact, I think you removed the dagger from the exhibit. Me? Me? And what bloody reason would I have to steal my own bloody dagger from my own bloody exhibit? The dagger is not yours, Doctor. It belongs to the Egyptian people. As to why you stole it, I do not pretend to understand your twisted American thinking. Racist. Perhaps you wanted to keep the dagger for yourself. That makes sense. In your own private collection. Yeah. Perhaps I should ask why you're shifting the blame onto me, you insignificant peasant. It would be very clever of you to steal the dagger, then stay about to start rumors about someone else stealing it. Only an archaeological thief would make such an accusation, Doctor. Now I'm sure that you stole it for yourself. I did not. <laughs> Well, yes, you did. <laughs> this is what it's devolved did into. <laughs> did. Did but not. Something about the way he's playing with his mustache did. makes me believe him. Gentlemen, please. I'm trying to Who eavesdrop. Mind your own business, you nosy reporter. But I... Uh... I have more important things to do. Our discussion is far from over, Dr. Carter. That's what you think, you malodorous buffoon. Dropping the M word again. All right. Laura and Yvette were voiced by the same actress, Leslie Wilson. Good look. Yeah, she's got some range. You see a rotund red... That's not... If you look closely at... This is fluffy. So you much eavesdropping. The right art, no? Then you should come with me this evening. I'll give you the personal tour of the old Her Master's schedule's gallery. gonna be full in the next hour. Well, uh, I... For the whole night. I oh, guarantee I... that you will not be wasting your time. It's Steve! You will enjoy it very much. Man, Steve cleans up nice. Well, I... Why is he here? You are studying the art at the university, no? Well, yes, but... Then it is settled. You are king of all of Daventry, no? While, no? But I... But I'm married to Valenice. There is no need to thank me yet. I will be enjoying it as much as you will. Uh... <laughs> he's like the first person who's like, not into. He just doesn't want to hook up with the vets. He's like, what? 
Excuse me? Wait, I want to talk to Steve. Where'd he go? It's a fanatic. Nah. Where'd they disappear to? Yeah, our buddy Steve. It's a sem. I like that guy. Man, if the game crashed right now, I'd be so sad. Let's save. <laughs> After all that eavesdropping. It's a happy party. Go Everybody's gone. All right, it's time to finally start exploring the museum a little bit. See if anyone's in the gift shop. Maybe the real thief went back. Well, I guess the Nazi's the real thief, but that just seems too simple, right? Now the dagger's gone, no one's shooting me out of the gift shop. Pretty sneaky. Back to the rotunda, Fräulein. The rest of the museum is off limits, and you are spooking their mastodons! <laughs> is that your attempted humor? Is that a Nazi sense of humor? All right, so we can't go in there. It's a happy. It's a. It's a. It's a. That. That would be rude. It's an alcove occupied by a very impressive urn that contains the ashes of the deceased architect of the Lion Decker Museum, Arvin Slatherlord Loudermilk the Third. Massive ego. Don't touch. Silence alone is great. You see the name, Arvin's. Gotta make sure I use this on a lot of As stuff. As you study everything in this room, you feel like you're being watched. Huh. The food is free of bugs, if that's what you were worried about. No? What kind of food they got in uh, New Orleans, Laura? There he is! There's everybody. Is he wearing, like, combat boots? What are you wearing, Steve? Take your time, Laura. Miss Bo? Oh! Mr. Dorian? It's the voice is not right. That's right. For that, we met at the docks. For that face. Oh, dear. Why would they Your sign shoes. off on that? They aren't exactly formal. He is wearing combat boots. Oh. Well, I can explain that. But not right now. I see. Well, mm, what brings you here? You. Whoa. Oh. Me? All right, a little sinister. You told me you'd be here tonight, and, well, I thought we should talk. Oh? About what? Being redheads in the um, 20s? Could we step outside for a minute? The moonlight is very nice tonight. Well, all right. I think I'd enjoy that. Laura. <laughs> I like that walk he's rocking. More of a jaunty strut. Low clouds. Sorry, where are we going? Okay, right here. Make sure we're in. I just wanted to explain to you who I really am. You're not Steve Dorian? Uh, well, yes, I am Steve Dorian. But I felt like I didn't give you the most accurate impression of myself when I met you earlier today. But, gee willikers, I'm just not used to meeting attractive young ladies I knew it! Docks. I was joking, but... I wasn't down there looking for a man. I'm a professional journalist working on a story. Oh, well, yes, of course you are. I didn't mean to imply anything. In fact, I was very impressed with your professionalism. And with your smile. I just didn't want you to think I'm a common stevedore. Stevedore. Well, I'll admit I was wondering what a stevedore was doing at this ritzy museum fundraiser. My stevedore job pays the bills, but I'm aiming for a career as an artist. However, I'm really here because... <laughs> my son, my Prince Alexander, screwed up again. Try to see you again. Oh, nice. Maybe I'm a fool. Maybe you think we're too different. But I had to try. 
Nah, I'm hot. Well, you're hot. I'm very flattered. Are you always this nervous? I'm not very good with women. I, I spent all my time working ever since I was ten years old, when my father died. I've never had a chance to date very much. Lately, I've spent my free time going to school. I'm starting to think we're more alike than I first thought. My mother died when I was very young, so I was raised by my father. What kind of an artist are you? I'm a painter, and I do a little sculpting. How interesting! But I think that an artist would know enough not to wear work boots with his tuxedo at a formal party. Oh, I said I'd explain that, didn't I? I was hoping nobody would notice. <laughs> I had to blow two weeks' oh, pay to rent this tux. Geez. But I didn't have enough left over to rent the fancy shoes. It's just that I had to see you again. Aww. You spent all your money just to see me? My goodness. I don't know what to 1920 say. 1920s stalking. It just seems so much say sweeter. you'll have dinner with me some evening. I, I may seem a little odd. But I promise that I'm harmless. I'd be honored to spend an evening with you and show you the sights around town. Aww. Well, I don't usually, but you've gone to a lot of trouble to find me. <laughs> I think I can. That's exactly trust why you shouldn't trust him, Laura. Really? You'll do it? <sighs> oh, thank you. You won't regret it. I'll make it a, a memorable evening. I'll paint for you. I'll dance for you. I'll, I'll sing for you. What? Anything you want. No, that, that's all right, man. Well. There's no need to get carried yeah, away. Yeah, dinner. Let's see how dinner goes first. Of course, you're absolutely right. I, I don't seem too anxious, do I? Maybe just a bit, but that's okay. Okay, I'll take a deep breath and calm down. I'll be fine. I'll do whatever you want. I think this is the beginning of something important, Steve. I like you already. Whoa! And Let's go back to the party, Steve. I've got work to do. Richie Cunningham looking mother... Alright, he came on strong there. I was not expecting that. Credits roll. Laura said screw the museum and her job. Married Steve. They lived happily ever after in Daventry, except for that whole Valenese business. Yeah, he just... Is that because of the boots, or is that just the walk that he's cultivated? That's what he's going with. It's part of his style. I don't know. Looking at a small portion of the big head really doesn't do justice to the immense size of the statue, but you can see that the bust was sculpted with extreme care, almost as if the sculptor's life depended on it, which it did. Which it did. <laughs> look, 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 look. Okay, let's make sure we're not missing anything. Should we get her? Don't be greedy. You don't need another water glass. We already stole one. The food and champagne look oh. Laura, eat something. It's gonna be a long night. These two gentlemen are about to, I don't know, they're doing like a ring around the rosy. Done with the uh, gift shop. Maybe that Nazi's gone by now. Score! Can't save for some reason. That is strange. Alright, let's start uh, checking everything out. In every respect, it appears to be untampered with and normal. Under close inspection, you can see that this pile of bones could indeed be assembled to resemble the skeleton of a mastodon. Determining whether or not the reproduction is at all accurate is beyond your expertise. Fair enough. A gator? In every apparent respect, this is a perfectly normal million-year-old chunk of a prehistoric creature's endoskeleton. The dagger is definitely not hidden in there. I gotcha. Uh, where else can we go? Go to the right... Thank goodness for Stinky and this uh, magnifying one. Can I not go that way? What's going on? Alright, whatever. Odd. 
Achtung! Tell us to not allowed in this room uh. at this time. You are disturbing the paintings. Raus! You leave now! Mark schnell! Come on, man. I'm trying to check out this museum. Uh, okay, here we go. Cool. Up close, this is an impressively realistic model. The animal's hide appears to be either very real or a spectacular fake, and the stitch marks are beautifully hidden. You find nothing that arouses your suspicions. Looking carefully, you determine that the models in the diorama are very well made. Looking at the pterodactyl from here through... Fair enough. Is that... It's a very big painting of a Spinosaur. Spinosaur mounting something? Wow. <laughs> Just jumped several million years. Go from the dinosaurs to the Middle Ages. A house pet, tastefully prepared for battle in 16th century armor. Aww. Slash kind of sad and weird. A close look at the armor reveals a heraldic device of a fierce beaver rampant on a chevron above the motto, Fordwood. A small label indicates that this Scottish dog armor belonged to Lord Balfour, first Earl of Fife. Alright, so we don't need to like check out everything. Up close, the suit of armor looks scratched. Up close. The helmet on this Italian suit of armor, circa 1460, is interesting because it's a barboot, which lacked protection for the lower part of the face. The barboot is sometimes called the barboot salet because, like the 15th century salet, it doesn't enclose the whole head, offering most of its protection to the top. Unlike the barboot, however, the salet is often characterized by a reinforced forehead plate and an elongated pivoted nape defense. It is, however, difficult to differentiate between the barboot, the salet, and the bassinet. The shallow barboot resembles the salet, while the deep barboot resembles the bassinet. Then again, who really cares? <laughs> All right, what the hell? There's your history lesson for the day, I suppose. The chest feels like wood, and you get a small... Sp the chest... The, the ch I think you'd learn, Laura. The carvings on the chest depict gnomes leaping through shrubbery. We got a hole here? Is that just... What is that? Nothing? Alright, not supposed to see that apparently. Let's do Laura 2 here. The hell is this? This is the life mask. Oh, exhibit. wow. You haven't seen Oof. this many dead looking, expressionless faces ha. since your accounting class at the university. Ba -da -boom Creepy. This head is French Canadian. You wonder if French Canadians are anything like Creoles and Cajuns. Yep. This is the life. The Panamanian head looks a little worried. I mean, they're dead and all. The head is from Brazil. It reminds you of your great aunt Marjorie, who went to Brazil to treat her brain fever and never came back. Man, so much detail. The South American head has strong, regular features. Regular? This is. This head is from the Cape region of Africa. This person lived off the Ivory Coast. How exciting! Died there too from the looks of it. This person lived... This is... This head is from England. You ponder whether or not he always looked so grim. The plaque says that this is the missing link. Well, he's hardly missing if he's right here on the wall. Hmm seems to be covered with a paint-like substance. Probably paint. Appears to have been applied quite some time ago. Hmm. Hmm. What fine crap. What fu- What fu- Seems to be covered with a paint like This is- This- The- The, the head looks like that of a North American Plains Indian. You've read many exciting stories. Hmm. This appears to be the head of an Eskimo. 
You wonder if they really do use every... Right. It's the head of a crow manyon man. My, how people have changed. It is funny when you think about it. Alright, let's uh, keep going. Is this like a basketball court? Does this double? Like at night? I guess we'll find out later. Uh, I guess that's how we came in through there. Are these all the same areas? Okay. It's a very King's Quest VI kind of uh, mechanic there, but this is before King's Quest VI, I think. The door is locked. When you touch the doorknob, you get a heavy coating of dust all over the palm of your hand. Okay, this room's not used too often. Don't touch it. The Chelsea's armor has a mirror like... Alright. It's only in the Egyptian ward here. The mummified corpse of Amenophis III, also known as Amenhotep III, or Memnon by the Greeks. He built large temples to Amon-Ra, both at Karnak and at Luxor. In the fifth year of his reign, Amenophis marched into Nubia to quell a mighty rebellion. He also ruled over the Mesopotamians, since his kingdom was quite large. Oh. The we also know that Amenophis was a mighty hunter who slew 102 lions during the first ten years of his reign, <laughs> in his spare time. Right, now he's dead. <laughs> So matter-of-factly. Let's pull out our, uh, let's investigate everything you here. You closely examine the glass case, revealing the scrap. This is where the dagger... Although there are a few scratches on the glass case... This is where the dagger was? It looks remarkably like a glass case in the shape of a pyramid. Yep. A small card informs you that this case contained the famous Dagger of Amon-Ra, which is now missing. Laura! Congratulations, you've cracked the case of the Dagger of Amon-Ra. Well, that's not like a... Oh, okay. I don't know if I was meant to do that. Don't touch the shards of glass. They're sharp. You might cut yourself. Or you could put an eye out. Or any of a number of other things could happen that your mother warned you about when you were little and... You can't take... Well, I guess it doesn't matter. There's no dagger there. A close look at the pyramid shows you the grainy texture of limestone, which you find highly educational. <laughs> Nerd. Uh, there's the granite there's... is cracked. The granite. Hmm. The granite is. At close range, you see. Li the placard says this is a granite steel depicting Horus and Thoth, found in the Temple of Amon Ra. This steel was modified during the reign of the pharaoh Akhenaten, then restored during the reign of Tutankhamun. 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 Let's see, let's check out this window here, maybe the... A sturdy window that looks out on the city of New York. How sturdy. The New York part checks out, though. Alright, let's see if there's more to this exhibit. What? What the hell is this? Ironically, there's a gold unk medallion, the ancient Egyptian symbol of life, resting in the pool of blood. What? Why are you so relaxed about that? <laughs> this is a big deal, Laura. That's the thing that guy was wearing, the Egyptian guy. A close look reveals the initials P.S. inscribed in the back of the bloody unk. <gasps> you pick it up and place it in your purse. Don't touch it. You don't know where it's been. The blood is probably in someone's body where they'd probably like it to be still. Looks are... Use the magnifying glass. Apparently the shoe's owner stepped in some of the blood. It apparently belongs to a dainty foot. Huh. There's a narrow red footprint from a woman's high-heeled shoe on the floor. Don't touch that footprint. Fair enough. Didn't you learn anything in the Colonel's Bequest? By the way, they haven't made one reference to that game this entire time. Shouldn't that have come up at some point? Shouldn't they have said something about how she successfully cracked that case? This placard describes the full translated text on the Rosetta Stone, which still resides in the British Museum. In summary, the text records the decree made at Canopus by the priesthood 
in honor of the pharaoh Ptolemy III, Euergetes I, who reigned from 247 to 222 BC. The decree discusses the great benefits which the pharaoh had conferred on Egypt and states what festivals are to be celebrated in his honor, concluding with orders that a copy of the decree in hieroglyphics, Demotic and Greek shall be placed in every large temple in Egypt. To maintain a sense of realism, the watermark says that this Rosetta Stone text was printed on papyrus, the equivalent of the paper of ancient Egypt. Apparently it was cheaper than printing the translation on a piece of black basalt. I mean, if, even if it wasn't always a Laura Bow game, like, you think at some point when they decided it was going to be one, they would have added some reference in. All right, this, is there a body in here? All signs point to yes. Laura! <coughs> Holy crap, I didn't think that guy would die first. Oh my God. Let's question him. Questions are a burden to others. Answers are a burden to oneself. In other words, you get no response. Not the time. Whoa. Pippin's shirt is immaculate, except for a few streaks of blood. His tie is partially undone, which is something that never would have happened if Dr. Carter had been allowed to notice it. Huh. There is a wide cut in the shirt fabric where the dagger sliced through to Pippin's chest. The cut is slightly wider than the width of the blade, as if it moved to one side after it penetrated his body. Huh. Is that the dagger, or is that one of the Pittsburgh knockoffs? A close look at the dagger ah. reveals the words, Made in Pittsburgh, stamped on the part of the blade that is not buried in Pippin Carter's chest. To your naked eye, the rough surface of the dagger handle doesn't appear to hold any fingerprints. He hated Pittsburgh. But that's something for the coroner to examine in detail. Huh. The vest has a smooth, silky feel to it. Nice material. Disassociating again. When you reach into Pippin's tuxedo jacket, you find a notepad in his inner pocket. You pick it up and place it in your purse. Probably should have looked at it first, but we got it. It's fine. Let's take a peek at it right now. I don't want anyone like walk in right now and get the wrong idea. Unreadable words are imprinted on the paper. Huh, that's a good point. Wonder what he saw right before he died. Maybe someone coming at him with a Pittsburgh knockoff dagger of Amon Ra. Very possible. A, a notepad made of good quality paper. Too faint to read. Huh. Got anything else on you, Pippi? There is nothing else in Pippin's tux. You hear a disturbing gurgling noise when you poke Pippin in the chest. Is he? That would be highly improper, Laura. I wasn't clicking on his dick. <laughs> no, I was just... Has he been dead for a while, or is that just the lighting? You lightly touch the blood with your finger. It's wet. You're a freak, Laura. You've changed since the colonel's bequest. It feels fake. A bit of water trickles out from the center of the flower. Hmm. You hear a disturb. His mustache feels stiff. He's rubbing all over his body. His ear feels... You poke Pippin's right eye. A tear trickles down his cheek. <gasps> Why am I allowed to do all of this? His flesh feels cold and <laughs> clammy. What the f it feels greasy to the touch. Stop judging this corpse. You poke him in the eye. His eyeball feels... Ew! Squishy. You lightly touch... That would be... The vest, you hear a dis... That is... Oh. Don't touch it. <laughs> don't touch it, you don't know. But you'll touch this stiff's eyeball? Over and over? Laura. Ah, gee. Oh, good. Stevie. 815. You scream like a banshee, lass. Did you kill the man then? Heck yeah, Dev. No, I <laughs> just walked in here and found him. I suppose that would explain your screaming then. Oh, that's not Did Steve. Did you see the murderer? No. All right, I'll talk to you later after you've had a chance to calm down. Just don't try to leave the building. 
I don't know. I don't trust you showing up here. <laughs>